There we go. Greetings, community, and welcome to day four of our deep dives. Uh, today we're going to be talking about a topic that is near and dear to my heart, and I know many of yours, housing. And with us today is our tech guru, Chris Spears, an executive producer and all-around chaotic guy, Star Long, of course, Joseph, uh, Rustic Dragon. And I'll be taking your questions in chat in just a moment. Over to you, Star. All right, welcome everybody to our Hangout uh, the fourth this week, and uh, more good times. Today we're talking about housing, and you know, uh, first we want to give our standard disclaimer that everything we're discussing with you is meant to be a conversation, a, a interesting debate back and forth about what's in or out, our current thinking, the emphasis on current thinking, because the only constant is change. And this is time for my catchphrase. Everybody on three. One, two, three. Don't, Don't lawyer, lawyer me, bro. bro. So uh, with that said, uh, housing for us is something uh, we're pretty excited about. Uh, we think it will be a nice uh, value add to the experience. Not something necessarily required, but uh, I think it can uh, add some things to your experience. Uh, it's not meant to be uh, something that you know, is the win-all button for the game. And so I know that some of you have felt like uh, the amount of uh, emphasis that uh, we've placed on it for to date makes it seem that way, but that's not our intention. Um, it really is meant to be a value add for you, some place for you to show off and socialize and uh, do group activities and things like that. So, uh, you know, the biggest difference between the way we're doing housing and the way we've done it in the past and some other games have done it is that because there are no separate servers, there's only one meta reality that all the instances of all the maps connect to, uh, there is a finite number of player lots in the game uh, for episode uh, one at launch. And that number, the number of those lots will be based on uh, the number of people who've pledged at a property owning tier or above, so those are uh, citizens and higher, plus uh, the number of lots that we've sold in the add-on store, and then uh, on top of both of those numbers, uh, a healthy chunk, at least another you know, uh, 30 to 50 percent more on top of that of lots more people to buy inside the game. But again, that will be a finite number. There will be a number of lots that we have when we launch, and those will run out over time as players are able to either uh, purchase them through pledges or uh, purchase them with in-game gold. And uh, again, when we talk about this sort of one meta reality across all the instances, what that means is if you go into the town of Owl's Head, uh, that some of you may experience in our you know, releases to date, and you see uh, a lot next to the river, when someone chooses that, if there are multiple instances of Owl's Head running at that time, because the map has maybe reached its limit, so say there are five instances of Owl's Head running, when someone in instance one claims that lot and puts down, say, a knight's keep on that lot, that knight's keep will then appear in all the other instances of Owl's Head. So even though they're all they're in instance one, Owl Head, Owl's Head one, if you want to call it that, uh, that knight's keep and any changes or additions they add or put in, like a vendor or whatever, will now propagate across Owl's Heads two, three, four, and five. So think of it like DC Universe Earth 2 kind of thing. Uh, so it's a multiverse kind of uh, idea. And uh, again, if you have a vendor in that lot that's selling something, players across all the instances of Alsat, and even players in single player, online, single player online can buy things from that vendor across all instances. And that's kind of what we mean about a, a meta reality. And then a more summary stuff. Uh, there are four sizes to lots. There, uh, each, uh, so there's a village lot. Uh, there's a town lot, which is twice as big as a village lot. There's a city lot, which is twice as big as a town lot. And then there is a castle lot for Lords of the Manor. And that one is four times the size of a city lot. Uh, and those four lots uh, will be represented in various degrees uh, in cities uh, uh, across the map. And the, the mix of those lots will vary based on the size of the municipality. So 
uh, something like a village might only have village lots, uh, whereas something bigger than that, like a town, would have village lots and town lots, and then something like a city, of uh, which the closest we have so far is something like Owl's Head, would have a mix of village, town, and city lots. And you're always going to, even in that case, though, you're always going to find more village lots than town lots and more town lots than city lots. And then something like a castle lot, uh, right now, the current thinking is there would only be one castle lot uh, per city. So they're, they're, at least for now, we're thinking that that would be kind of a uh, part of the exclusivity of that. And just the sheer size the thing takes up on a map, we'd probably be limiting that to one per map. Uh, and uh, more overview stuff. Again, some of this is really basic stuff covered in our FAQs or posts we've made. Uh, so, uh, but just want to, for those of you new to the game, make sure you understand how all the system works. And the way, uh, the first thing to, if you want to own property in the game, you have to have a, uh, a deed. And that deed gives you the right to claim a lot. So uh, a village deed lets you claim a village size lot. A town deed will let you claim a town sized lot or a village sized lot. So you can claim one smaller. Uh, a, a city lot, a city deed will let you claim claim a city lot, a town lot, or a village lot. Uh, and then from there, uh, once you claim a lot, you now own that lot. And uh, if in the case of a backer deed, uh, all the deeds that backers get are tax-free, which means that once you claim that lot, the only way you can lose that lot is through inactivity. Uh, whereas lots that are deeds that are purchased either in the add-on store or inside the game, have a monthly upkeep cost that you pay in in-game currency, and that that if you do not pay your uh, monthly upkeep cost, then the lot will revert back to the game and become available for other players. Your deed will go back into your inventory, so you won't lose the ability to claim another lot. You'll just lose potentially lose that particular lot you are on, and your house and all the contents of it will also go back into your inventory. And that's, uh, oh, and all the houses are decoratable. So um, pretty much uh, any surface on the house, uh, it, you know, walls, floor, uh, eventually ceilings, uh, eventually also the outside of the building are all uh, decoratable, which means you can place objects on or in them or on top of them or attached to them. Uh, you can decorate your lot. That's the area of land. Um, you don't actually even have to put a, a house on your lot. You, if you want to make your lot an indie lot and just set it up as something else, like a garden or a farm or whatever, that's totally possible as well. Um, we plan to have tons and tons and tons of decorative items, most of them uh, player-made. Uh, so again, just like we talked about uh, yesterday uh, with crafting, the, the idea is that uh, the game will start with a pretty small, finite set of uh, low-end default decorative items, and all the rest of the decorative items would be made by the players, for the players. Wow, uh, Star's here. talking a lot. I am talking a lot. Uh, also, don't forget to tell them how housing is working for R4 and R5, since I know there were some people who were confused by that as to what was actually going on. Oh, uh, right. So since we don't have uh, all the lots built yet, uh, and there will be thousands of them, uh, we, we had to come up with sort of a temporary way to still allow people to experience the housing system and not come into one of our leases and not have any chance to use our housing system and test it out and experiment with it. So for release four and probably for release five, it'll be the same way. We actually put a two hour time limit on owning a lot. So uh, once you claim a lot, uh, a timer would go up. Again, this is very temporary. This is only for testing. It was only for release four, possibly release five until we get more player lots into the game, uh, but there was a two-hour time limit at which time uh, the, the lot would revert back to the game and then you'd have to go find another lot. Uh, so that, that's, but again, that's a very temporary state of affairs until we get more lots for uh, the players to do. So that's kind of the broad overview, and unless Chris has something to add. Oh, well, I was just going to add, also for R4, the you decorate and people see it in all instances stuff was working. Uh, it was, there's a little bit of brute force work being done that should be cleaned up for R5. It's, that was actually part of what caused occasionally, like once a minute, you'd get a small hitch 
uh, if things had changed around there. Uh, for R5, that should be fixed, and we'll be sending everything Delta is not reloading everything on the lot, and it'll just be if you place down one item, it should instantly appear on other people's stuff, so there won't even be that one med delay. But all, pretty much all the tech on that stuff is working now. So, Baron Violation, if you give us a brand new Lord of the Manor pledge, we will put in the lick emote so you can lick things in your house, Okay. How's that sound? <laughs> oh, wow. Oh. He, he wants to be able to lick things in their house. Um, I, they're... Uh, yeah, I guess that's worth $10,000 of development. So, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, as long as it's confined to your house, I'm not sure we want you to be able to go around licking things. We'll even let you come out here and model the emote for us. Yes, yes. As long as it's not my head. Uh, Okay. All right. Lots so, of questions uh, piling up. Can we jump into some questions? Yeah, go for it. We got a lot of great questions. Uh, let's see. What do we got here? Um, that will was a house be movable? The top. Yeah. So uh, Ember asks, "Will a house be movable within the plot? Like, if I want to have a bigger backyard, for example?" Uh, we we like that idea. There are a lot of issues associated with it, so it's not something we currently can support. Uh, for episode one, but in the longer term, it's definitely something we would like to explore. But for now, there's going to be a default location that the house will go on. Um, uh, Jat Vardur, oh, an obvious question, is a new lot to be created for Dukes? Well, uh, that is an interesting question, which has been posed to me multiple times in the forums as well. Uh, we are still discussing the uh, economic ramifications of that because of uh, the way lots have been valued to date is that the price of a pledge slash lot is twice the price of the, uh, the first time that lot is offered. So for instance, uh, a Lord's Pledge costs, which is a town lot, costs uh, at least twice the amount of a citizen or knight's pledge in which that was the first time a village, those are the, when a village law was answered. So uh, the, you know, a duke isn't twice the amount of a uh, baron pledge, so the economics don't quite work there. Uh, we understand the desire, we understand also kind of the can of worms we opened, uh, creating the larger plot for uh, the Lords of the Manor, but again, they paid, uh, you know, double the Duke, and if you actually add up the cost of all the pledges up to that point, basically the equivalent of all the pledges. And so that was our economic justification of providing them such a larger and more meaningful plot. Not saying a larger plot for Dukes is off the table, but there are a lot of reasons why it, it has the potential to uh, mess up the valuations we've been associating with lots. That's my very political answer to that. And then in the meantime, an entire can of worms has been opened about licking. For example, Sir Monkey Smack says, can we lick things to open secret passages? Wow, this great. Is, uh, what a great game mechanic. Yes. We're going to be building uh, Lick Simulator 3000. Um, will, uh, the Bad Hermit wants to know if we will be able to expand a basement through mining and such. Oh, so real quick for everyone, basics of basements. Uh, in addition to a house that you can place on your lot, you can buy a bike basement to go underneath your lot. Uh, and that basement could be anywhere between one and five stories deep. Uh, there's different configurations and layouts of them. Uh, the, they're, they're actually a really great value because a basement, you know, multiplies the size, because base, most basements are as big as we could make them and still fit within the size of the lot. And so for all intents and purposes, a lot uh, multiplies I mean, a basement multiplies the size of your lot by anywhere between 100% and 500%. So they're, they're an amazing way to easily expand the size of your lot. Now, it's all underground, so people can't see it unless they go into it, uh, but that's how basements work. Now, uh, the question is, will we be able to expand their basement through mining and such? Uh, again, great idea. We've talked about this before. We've even talked about, hey, what if we even eventually gave the ability to have a dungeon underneath your basement? Um, and very cool idea. We definitely want to explore it. Uh, not currently in scope for episode one. Dungeon, yes. Dungeon. Where maybe there would be some licking involved in the dungeon. Uh, I didn't say it this time. 
Right. Uh, will there be restrictions? Okay, this is a question from Milzer. Uh, will there be restrictions on what type of housing can be placed uh, in various parts of a town or the towns themselves? Uh, so we've actually seen various posts about this. Uh, the equivalent of homeowners association rules uh, related to towns. And while we understand the role-playing desire of that and the, uh, the end result of where a more homogenous view of a particular area, uh, we think that the sacrifice to freedom that it would cause uh, for players who, in, most case, in a lot of these cases with these houses, paid real money for uh, I think they might have an objection to not being able to place their house wherever they want. And so right now we do not plan on having any restrictions. Now, with that said, uh, there is an option, you know, and you saw us starting to experiment in R4 with this where we we had a, uh, a map that was all player housing. There was no NPC buildings of any kind. Um, and so maybe we, and the plan is that there, there, there will be quite, hopefully quite a few of those, of different kinds, like that one was a porous one, but we have, you know, different kinds of uh, places we can build those. And maybe uh, that's something we could explore along the lines of maybe those kinds of towns uh, we could experiment with players voting to have some sort of housing homeowners association rules or something like that. Uh, but for now, we don't plan on doing anything. And I expect there'll be some out-of-the-way towns that generally aren't as populated, and I, I kind of expect that the role players will kind of uh, uh, find those towns and take over those towns, and uh, you know that there will be a little more control. I know people who played in R4. That was one of the things that we noticed was everybody wanted the biggest possible house, and I kept commenting on it. Felt like I was walking through a McMansion neighborhood with all the the giant knights keeps around there, but. I expect in the in the real game it'll be uh, much more diverse than what we saw there. Yeah, I mean, I think it. W I mean, it, if you look at the way uh, the numbers lay out currently about how many village, town, city lots, I mean, it's definitely a pyramid. And so uh, right now, because everybody can have any house they want, they're always, of course, picking the largest house that they can, which is great because you know uh, they get to see houses they don't necessarily own yet. Maybe that's an incentive for them to upgrade, which helps us with our fundraising, so everybody wins. Uh, but the end result, of course, is that everybody maxes out to the biggest house, and that's not going to happen based on the numbers. You won't, you won't actually see that uh, in most places. Most places, you'll see the pyramid structure where there'll be a lot of small houses and a few large houses. So uh, I think some of that will regulate itself. Um, uh, here was one, Ember. Will basement hatches be placeable anywhere? Uh, can we place them outside our house? Uh, yes, so the current idea for basement hatches is, so you got to see in R4, we put those little hatch, we put hatches uh, scattered around the various towns, so you guys got to explore basements for the first time. And the idea is that um, when you, what you get with a basement is basically that hatch item as a decorative object, just like a chair or a table or whatever, um, with the only restriction being that it has to be on the bottom floor or on uh, the, the surface of your lot. So you can place it outside, you can place it on the floor of your house, uh, pretty much anywhere you want, um, as long as there's nothing else there already. Uh, and uh, we don't plan to restrict it to inside the house or it could be out in your lot, wherever you'd like. Um, you know, like, think like storm cellar type thing where uh, you would enter that from the outside of the house. So, yeah. Um, that's that's the current plan. Um, let's see. Um, Since I'm holding uh, Mojito here as my house pet, I just wanted to answer Ember's question. Will non-combat pets have the ability to stay home or free roam on our property? Oh, and I'll answer it, uh, which is yes, we expect that to, to work. We actually, I think we blocked anything from moving on to player lots for this release, but only because we were seeing some weirdness and things like a deer would be on a lot and someone would create a house on top of the deer, trapping it under the house. Uh, and so then you'd see like horns sticking through your floor in your house, which is kind of creepy. Uh, but yes, we should, we support pathfinding on the houses and your pet, uh, house pet should be able to roam. Uh, 
Here's an interesting one from uh, Aaron Swordmaster. Have you considered opening up new player lots via player actions quests? Like if a certain hex is lumberjacked enough, it becomes eligible for housing. Uh, yeah, that's a cool idea. Uh, uh, we like that. We And we've talked about various ways to make those, uh, again, like that little village that we had, the non NPC, we need a better name for them, but right now we call them the non NPC villages uh, that we had in R4. Uh, we, the idea that's behind that one is, while there may be 50 lots on that map, we'll actually only allow, say, 35 of those lots to be claimed. And so if there are multiple versions of that map scattered, multiple versions of that scene scattered around the main map, uh, even though they might be based on a same map, the way players claim those lots will make each one have its own unique character uh, and feel like a, a completely different place. Um, and uh, we've talked about long-term wanting to do things like uh, maybe have some part of it, even though it starts out as a non-NPC town, maybe after a certain point there's a place in the center of the map uh, where uh, like a crafting pavilion would show up or a bank or something like some sort of central services area uh, that the players could use based on how they expand over time. But we haven't talked about the idea of like quests or player activities opening up uh, hexes or lots, but I, I think that's a, that would be a cool addition as well. Uh, not sure yet how that would fit you know, in or out of episode one, but something we definitely want to play with. Uh, there was a question. Uh, uh, if someone, people, Amber Rain asks, if people select houses in multiplayer, will that, will that houses be taken in single player uh, online? Yes, uh, because again, in any online mode of play, uh, that's all one meta instance. So uh, if someone selects uh, that lot next to the river in Owl's Head, that'll show up in everybody's uh, versions of the game, regardless of what mode they're playing in, except for offline mode. Uh, off, in offline mode, uh, not, nothing that the players are doing in the online mode will affect that. So uh, you'll be able to, you have access to all the lots in uh, offline mode. Um, let's see, Phoenix, will I be able to display books that are readable but not writable in my house? Uh, yes, that is the goal. Um, Baron Violation, when you move from location one to location two, can you keep your house exactly how it appears prior to the move decorations and all? Um, yes, that is a wish list for us to do, that when you uh, save a house to your inventory or have the magic movers move it, uh, that it would uh, preserve uh, the decorations inside of it. Um, that won't work for any decorations you've placed on your lot if you move the lot, uh, but def definitely we want to try. Uh, we haven't figured out quite how to do it yet, but we want to try to make it so uh, all the decorations inside your house would be preserved. Now, remember, if we do do that, though, uh, those decorations aren't going to be available for, like you say, if you want to do swap houses on your lot for a different house, if you saved all those decorations in that other house, they wouldn't necessarily be available for uh, the new house that you're placing, uh, because then we get into weird duplicate instances of items and things like that, So, which we want to avoid. Um, and, and also, just so people understand the reason why that's not as easy as it seems, we can do it. Uh, the question becomes in people, like you place down, uh, you've got five different houses that you own, you can place down a house, you know, put a ton of items in it and then pick it up and put it in the bank and now you've got this extra huge bank slot because you've got all the items stored in your house. Uh, that's why I'm still leaning towards the, if you move it, it can stay, but if you actually pick it up, it uh, all the items go to a bank slot. Um, okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to kill your buzz there, Star. No, 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 I'm just scared for questions. So, uh, you were, you're supposed to keep talking while I have that oh, okay. in my in my uh, my eye. Uh, there was one. Oh, it keeps scrolling up, and I can't read it. Here, I've got one. Hold, I'm sorry. I'll stop. For a second. Yeah, stop adding questions. It keeps popping up. It's a horrible interface. Just for a second. Okay. Um. Uh. I forgot. Let's see where it was. Oh. Uh. And actually, Chris, this is one that you can help mm -hmm. answer too. So, uh, from Ria. Oh uh -huh. no. A question from Artemis. Uh, asked if. There's an item limit in the lots, and if the limit is tied to the lot size, house size, or type, and basement size, and level, uh, the answer is yes to all of that. Uh, so the current thinking is that 
there will be uh, an item limit, and that item limit calculation will be based on the lot size, uh, the house size, the basement size. Um, we haven't actually talked about house type. Uh, we've mainly talked about like the, the square footage of the house being the main factor there, uh, but but maybe type might be a factor too. Uh, I mean, uh, but uh, so it, it'll be a fairly complex uh, calculation, and we haven't yet figured out how we display that to you. I mean, it's a pretty, whether it's probably just going to be a simple number of like here's your limit, you know, and you can see how many how close you are to that limit. Um, but yeah, we definitely plan on having some sort of uh, might want to lock that door. Uh, some sort of limit there. That's and, and we've already got some logic in there. Just uh, people probably haven't noticed, but we limit the number of light sources you can put down on a lot uh, just for performance reasons. Because if you go and put down like a hundred candles and everyone's a dynamic light source, it can cause frame rate problems for other people. So we've already got some of that logic in there already. We just haven't set limits or added the data for for setting those limits. Uh, I wanted to add, answer one by Corvash here. Uh, which is, will we be able to change the skins of the houses? Not for episode one. I think if you listened to the talk yesterday, we were talking about that we do have support for channels, that we can uh, have uh, colorable channels to things, so we could allow you to do that type of, of uh, skinning where you change out the colors later on. But definitely for episode one, we don't have that on our schedule as of yet, so the best way to make your house look different is just to decorate it. Uh, and remember, we'll have exterior decorations, right? So we're, we're uh, part of the expansion to our housing decoration functionality is we're going to add a whole new layer of uh, um, decor places where you can decorate the house, so like the outside walls, uh, the roof. Uh, so uh, like great example uh, for outside things are like flags or like um, the wind power generators that you see in house heads. Like those are the things we want to offer as decorative objects that you can put on top of your house. Uh, Etc. So um, that'd be good. Those could be used to uh, like generate power to heat your hot tub. Exactly. Yeah, because it takes a lot of energy to heat those hot tubs. Um, let's see. Uh, if a guild. Okay, here's an interesting one uh, from Canterbury. If a guild pitches in to buy a house, is there a way for it to be owned by multiple owners, or if the guild leader goes inactive for its deed? Uh, Please let's hold on adding questions just for a bit. Yeah, we've gotten very close to even these. Uh, I know they're, they're not stopping either. Yeah, I know. Uh, so uh, that's a great question about group ownership. So um, we uh, we probably whatever we end up having for uh, the fallbacks for the guild structure. So like if the guild leader leaves and then. then you know, like guild officers and things like that, we probably follow some sort of similar thing to guild-owned property. Um, uh, we also want to have the ability, uh, this is a great way for me to plug one of the things I'm excited about, is the idea that um, any, uh, so we have the idea of permissions for access to your house, so uh, there's the idea that you can set your house to be public, so basically, which is, uh, by the way, how it works right now, uh, so anybody can come onto your property, but they can't, like, move things around, they can't take things, they can't like set up a vendor or whatever, but, but they can come on your property. You can set it up so friends can come on, only friends can come on your property. Um, you can set it up that uh, we have this concept of kindred, and kindred can actually have all the same rights as you on your property as far as decoration and setting up vendors and using your crafting things, tables, uh, but they can't sell the house or sell the, the lot. Uh, but we also have, want to experiment with this idea that um, if you are the member of a guild, you can declare your property uh, a guild chapter house, which means now uh, your guild mates have that same sort of kindred level of access to your property. So even if there is a main, say, guild house, um, any guild member can declare their, their house a guild chapter house, which means your guild might have multiple locations within a town or even uh, different cities. Uh, so I think that's going to be uh, a pretty interesting way for a guild to have multiple structures. Um, let's see, some other ones. I think there was a question about uh, what happens if you don't pay the upkeep uh, for the house, so what, uh, or you're inactive. So the plan is if you are e either inactive for X amount of time, uh, in the case of the tax-free lots, uh, or if you do not pay your monthly upkeep cost, uh, the 
the l deed that you use to claim the house would then be re and the house and all its contents would be returned to your inventory and the piece of land, the lot itself, would then become publicly available for other people to buy. Um, yeah, I've got one here where they actually called out my name, so I wanted to okay. answer because when they talk to me, I think it's important to answer. Uh, this was Kickstar Dragon uh, asking about, uh, he noticed that the house changes on a lot only showed in the client when he approached the lot. Is that intended be or behavior intended to remain? Uh, no, that is that was kind of the let's minimize the performance that we're giving you guys since we don't have a way to only change, resend the parts of the house that changed. Uh, that's what I was saying in R4, that's how it worked. In R5, it'll actually be we're only sending if you put down a single item, we only send that single item. Uh, and that will allow us to not have those hitches that people were seeing and also to send information at, a, at whatever distance we want to without worrying about the performance. So no, that was not intended. It should be if you place down in R5, hopefully. Uh, this is kind of the under the cover stuff, so we don't really put it in release notes as to when exactly it'll be there, but I think it'll probably make R5 that uh, if you put down an item, it should show up within a matter of seconds on other people's clients. Uh, even at a distance. So if you put up your giant pink flamingo or uh, whatever big item that you're putting down, people your hot tub, for instance, your hot tub from a distance. I didn't want to use that twice. So, but yeah, if they put down your hot tub from a distance, they you should see it. If he puts your neighbor puts it on his roof up there while you're on your roof from a great distance, you'll see it and be jealous. So, so if I'm having a hot tub party, everyone can see what fun we're having and awesome. Right. Yeah. Right. You might need one. Yeah. Exactly, and they can see the wind generator that you put up to power your hot tub. We can we can throw some more questions in here now. Uh, so uh, let's see. Violation asks, will we have holiday houses, uh, like a Christmas themed house. Uh, that's a great idea, um, and we had we hadn't yet thought of holiday themed houses, like a, you know, a snow covered ski chalet perhaps. Uh, something like that, but uh, that's it. Or gingerbread house. Oh my god, we totally have to have a gingerbread house. Now, can you eat the gingerbread house? Mm -hmm. And does it function like food and game? Oh my god, do you, do you, do you have to cook the gingerbread house? You craft it. Yeah. Or yeah. maybe if you try to eat the gingerbread house, a witch pops up and tries to cook you. If you eat too much, you get sick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Um, uh, this is more of a funding thing, but it's kind of about houses since part of the upper pledges have houses in them. That Matt Herman asks, after April 7th, will existing founders still be able to upgrade their pledge, uh, albeit at higher pricing? Yes, you described it perfectly. Um, you, uh, at, existing founders will still be able to upgrade to higher pledges, and by upgrading, they will get access to the founder rewards at those higher tiers. They will. The only difference being is after April seventh, they will have to pay the benefactor prices, which are slightly higher. Okay. Um, uh, there was a question uh, from Amber Rain, uh, which which she clarified at the beginning. Thank you about not even asking for episode one or quote soon. But is there any idea in the future of custom built houses um, and? Uh, you know, definitely that's something that uh, we think is pretty interesting. It would, you know, long term, uh, emphasize the term long term, that we think uh, could ha have some possibilities. Um, you know, uh, it, it has to be done well for them to look interesting, but, you know, if you look at uh, what uh, what is being done currently in the 3D space with modular stuff like that, like with uh, EQ Landmark, for instance, I think there's some really cool stuff that could be done there that. Of course, they have a much, much larger budget than we do. But uh, long term, when we're wildly successful, we can totally afford to have something like that. That will look amazing. Uh, <laughs> I like Dunk's question. Will I be able to declare my lot a PVP zone? Uh, we ha we've actually uh, talked about maybe not your lot, but uh, one idea that uh, you know, so we have these arena basements, and we're actually starting to release more. Uh, like we originally, we only had a, a city-sized arena basement, but we're releasing multiple sizes, including a, even a village-sized arena basement. And uh, we all, we, 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 when we see those, constantly talk about Fight Club. And so uh, the easy way to do it is just to have a duel down there. But 
uh, I, I think it would be cool if, for some way for players to make that arena basement a, like a PvP zone. Uh, so uh, I don't know how we do it, and I just made up a new feature that we have to support, but uh, I think it would be really cool. And Chris is shaking his head and putting his head in his hands, but uh, uh, I think it's cool. So I, Remember no the promises. disclaimer, we don't have to, you know, no promises. This is just... No problem. Don't lawyer me, bro. That's, oh, this is a good opportunity. Oh, yeah, We're, halfway through. We're halfway through. It's the... These are meant to be discussions, not promises, not final answers. Uh, not uh, these aren't the stone tablets brought down from the mountain. Uh, I know this is not stone; that is an iPad. I realize uh, this is meant to be a conversation. So our catchphrase: "Don't lawyer me, bro." Speaking of conversation, the there have been a flood of questions coming through chat, okay. and the other, like the recurring back theme to the conversation has been how much will the community pay for me to lick your head? They are trying to raise $800 for me to lick your head and I told them you're my boss that I don't know if I'm willing to lick your head. Well, and I, so if we're, if, I mean we have the, can we look at the purchasing? We can. We can look up the transactions but I'm not so keen on this whole idea. I've been trying to slither out of it. Man, um, I want to be in Austin. Uh, I mean, for <laughs> for eight hundred dollars, I will definitely let Joseph lick my head. I, I mean, Yay. I'm cheaper than him, so apparently he has a higher price tag to do the licking. So well, it might cost more for him to do the licking, but I would I would let him do it. For someone brought up a really good point mm -hmm. that this is straying from the topic of the deep dive, by the way. Well, but okay. The, the good point being, you know, the Lord of Chaos's sweat could be fatal. It could be. Or it could make you more powerful because I am powered by the tiers of our players. So, I'll bring up uh, the transaction. So I, I I grow more powerful, which would in turn make sense that that would be transferred in my sweat. So you may gain some power by by licking my head. Um, so it's like it's like using potions in Witcher. You get strong. Yeah, exactly. and Exactly. Kills you. Okay. Let's while he looks up how our purchasing is going to see if it's worth it for him to lick my head. You see this look. Uh, so now you'd have to verify that it's the people in chat that are talking about yeah. it that are doing the purchasing. So, so I saw it go up a little bit there, so I'll go ahead and give them a uh, preview here. And uh... Uh oh, Chris licked his mojito's head. So not quite the same, but okay. Um, mm, tasty. Okay. Uh, will doors be added to the stone and timber basement doorways? Yes, definitely. Uh, the plan uh, there's. Uh, we just didn't have time to put them in there, but definitely we're going to have doors in there. Um, and then Meva Gissy says scene loading between house and basement is quite slow. Uh, and uh, which way are we talking about going? So going from the town down to the basement should it should be fairly quick. Going the other way is going to be. I mean that's a full map load. Um, so um, there's no plans currently to make basements contiguous scenes and. Uh, there are some tech reasons, but it's also some. Uh, the nice thing about basements uh, for you guys is uh, they can have much higher uh, item limits. They can have much higher limits for how much lighting you can put in there, um, and so uh, that's it's better for you as players to have be able to do more stuff in there because they won't have the same limits as we have in a big shared scene. So, but there are also some tech reasons about cutting terrain and things like that that are. Uh, Expensive for us to solve for this episode. Uh, long term, we could talk about making them contiguous, but uh, uh, not on the table for episode one. We we had a few questions come in earlier on that uh, didn't might have gotten passed over because they were coming in so quick. Okay. Um, oh, one of them that's really good uh, came in from Adam. How do you differentiate your town so they have a unique feeling when everyone uses the same houses? Did we already answer that actually? I mean, uh, just... we answered a variation of it, but uh, you know, I think that's something that's going. I think I predict and hope uh, that a lot of that will, I think, self-regulate between the players. I mean, I think that um, one, they're going to be, they're just going to be naturally different because players, again, because like we were talking about earlier. Um, if you look at the pyramid of ownership, uh, you know the bigger houses are more expensive, the bigger lots are more expensive, so you're going to see fewer of the biggest houses, you're going to see more of the smaller houses. Uh, the order in which people choose lots is going to be different in every time, place. I mean, I think that they're going to, by default, look really different. And as far as them 
theming, I think you'll see, um, you know, a lot of that uh, regulate. Like, so if one particular guild, for instance, decide that this is the this is the town that we want to, you know, live in, they'll probably naturally start saying, well, we're we're the, you know, uh, the Edel, you know, we're a German guild, so we're gonna make, we're gonna all use the Edelman houses, and so you'll have a, a village that's got a bunch of Edelman houses in there, or this is a knight's town, so it's all going to be knight's keep. So I, I think I think players are going to generate most of that. Uh, I, I do I really do not want to put in systemic uh, things from our side that would limit the freedom that players have to do stuff like that. So um, and uh, so if that question was about player housing, that's that's kind of answered. Uh, like, let's see, uh, Quetz, uh Quaddle uh, asked, "Oh, did has the funding happened? Was that sigh about the funding?" It's it's happening like way more than we bargained for. Like it's 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 happened like multiple times over. Apparently, like someone's upgrading the Lord of the Manor two, and they're asking for two licks. Oh yeah, I think that's definitely worth two licks. So how, about just, got... how about just one real lick? I hate you guys. Do I get to smile the whole time? One of us has to. I, I think Joseph should smile, a creepy smile, too. Yeah, there we go, right there. They paid for it. Oh, I think you have to do it again because uh, Gina talked during the uh, video. Oh, no, we haven't done it. I've locked oh. the camera. He's locked the camera, okay. so they're guaranteed not to miss it. <laughs> and so the real what you're getting to see here is, yes, we can be bought. And uh, yes, OK, do it. Make it happen. Go. Oh God! Oh God! Oh Jesus! Oh, that was awful. All right, I need a paper towel. I'll be back. Hold on. Can, oh. you, can you grab a beverage while you're up? Yes. I'd go for a whiskey. <laughs> Wh whiskey would be a good antiseptic. You know, I remember what three, four, five, six months ago oh. now when I first had a conversation with Star on Facebook, and I was like, oh my god, I talked to Star Long on Facebook, thank you. I never thought, months later, I would be licking Star's head on camera. So thank you, community. <laughs> Only in my worst nightmares would this have ever happened. So thank you from, like, yeah. from Shroud of the Avatar and from Hearth of Britannia for making this happen. I need a moment. Yes, there you go. It was it wasn't nearly as sexy as I had imagined it would be. It was like reverse cat talk. Yeah, I don't know how you could have ever imagined that being sexy, but okay. Uh, let's see, Quetzalcoatl uh, asks, uh, will there be lots in the middle of nowhere, like isolated maybe in the swamp? Absolutely. Like, uh, again, like in R4, you saw us experiment with the forest town. Uh, we want to have those little sort of isolated uh, places where there may be player habitation in, like, deserts and hills and swamps. Uh, any biome we build, we want to have a player, a place where players can own property inside that space. Um, let's see, Sear is asking, when will we see more varieties of basements? Uh, so we, we actually have, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we're about to release uh, a series of more arena basements. So, uh, so far you guys only saw the city arena basement. Well, we're going to be adding, and we did the town arena, so we're going to have a village arena basement. Um, and then uh, I just saw today a castle arena basement, and it is unbelievable. It is basically like having your own stadium. It's like stacked tier like this, and then it's got like all these setup areas where uh, it, it's it's really cool. So uh, we're gonna have those arena basements. Um, uh, if anybody has ideas of other basement types that use our sets, uh, we're glad to hear them because uh, we're uh, at least for now we sort of. Uh, ran out of steam on what we could do with those basements. So if there's any uh, suggestions, uh, you guys could collect those in the forums. That would be great. Um, let's see. Uh, violation asks. Uh, oh boy, yeah. There's the picture of it. Uh, preserve for eternity. Thank you, thank you, thank you again for the money for the head licking. As if I didn't have a reputation already. Yeah, or me for that matter. Uh, okay. Uh, violation. Uh, yeah, definitely need to get in the hot tub to clean this off. So. Um, Oh, yeah. I like this one better. <laughs> okay. So, uh, let's see. Will you guys be adding new houses in game for currency and in the add on store monthly post release? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, that, I mean, the idea is that we plan to, you know, add content as often as we can. Um, and uh, both for, uh, and 
most of that content we would probably we'd be putting in the game, I think. Uh, but we might have a few houses that are add-on exclusives as well. Um, let's see, Drokus uh, asks, is there a way to give Kindred access to someone but limit rooms or items in the house that they have access to? Uh, yeah, we uh, talked about ways to do that. One of the ways we talked about it is uh, making uh, the ability to craft a lock and a key uh, that you could then uh, sell the key uh, and the key would have like a time limit, so there would be a recipe for you know a you know a, a 24 hour key or a one week key or a, uh, or in some cases maybe it's an hourly key uh, for if you if you're running that kind of business uh, and then you could you could five minutes <laughs> what are you talking about hourly well I mean hours would be close anyway so you would sell that key it would have a time limit and then you know, that would be associated with the lock so um, yeah so we we Right now, we don't have systems planned to support that level of granularity of like only certain rooms and things like that. But we want to figure out ways that we can make that happen because we think it'll be really cool. Um, let's see. Uh, will there be unique uses? This is from Ithon, and I'm going to paraphrase it. Uh, will there be unique house uses for houses uh, based on their type? So, like, can I use the windmill to mill? Can I use the uh, you know, do I get better fishing from the sailing boat, et cetera? Um, yeah, I mean, that's, a, that's an interesting idea when other people have talked about, like, uh, the mine cave slash style basement, whether uh, you could literally mine ore in there and things like that. Uh, definitely something we've thrown around, not currently uh, in the plans, but uh, I think there's a, that's a cool extension to what we've talked about because uh, we've also talked about things like uh, going back to that wind power idea, um, Maybe you know the putting those wind power uh, devices on your house or water power if you if your building is next to water would let you power certain things in your house that wouldn't necessarily uh, do things or animate. So I think that's a cool idea. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, question from Boosh: Are basements also public and can vendors be in them? The answer is yes. Um, uh, what else? Um, let's see, Smack, uh, did anyone ask the question about upgrading tax-free deeds later in the game? Um, yeah, so we, we discussed this one continually, and uh, um, it, uh, we understand uh, that's uh, how we've discussed that in the past and the ability to do that. Um, the pricing associated with that will have to be quite, quite large uh, through in-game currency because um, in order to not devalue uh, the, uh, those lots that were purchased uh, through pledges or the add-on store. So uh, we haven't quite figured out how we could price that yet. Um, uh, not saying we won't support it, not saying we will support it. It's definitely something we're discussing. Uh, we understand it's uh, something we had promised earlier on. Um, but uh, we're not sure how we can support that without devaluing the existing plots. Uh, so until we have a final answer on that, you know, your only guarantee to get those larger tax-free lots is to uh, upgrade your pledge. But again, I'm not saying it's off the table. It's just it's got a lot of issues associated with it with the economy that we're trying to figure out. Um, huh, I like Melchior's Mayer's question: Can a failed alchemy experiment blow up your house? Um, no, uh, but uh, that's that's a fun idea, um, and uh, one of the things we have talked about. Uh, but it does bring up some other. I, I, one of the ideas we've talked about is um, something along the lines of you know guild structures and guild warfare. Is there some way where we can make it so while you couldn't literally knock the house down, uh, somehow damaging the house affects something about about that structure, like. Um, its item limit, maybe, perhaps, or uh, how many vendors it can support at a time, or something like that. So um, while we're not necessarily going to have it so you can burn the house down or knock down the walls, maybe have some stats associated with that house. Uh, I'm just making this stuff up, uh, but I think it could be... And Chris is, like, smiling at me, like... <laughs> yes, yeah, he see, is. <laughs> I see you just making it up on screen. Uh, chaos, man. Uh, but I think that would I think that would be some for some interesting things. Um, uh, let's see uh, another question. I, I like uh, Melchior's question also on the chimney blow smoke. 
And that's the type of stuff that anytime Richard thinks of that type of stuff, he absolutely sends emails, goes around me and star tells engineers, artists, whoever that they have to do this. So that type of stuff, if he ever heard that comment, that would be in there. Uh, we totally can do that, that type of chimney blowing smoke and changing with the direction of the wind, which also is another Richard thing in terms of his uh, comments on the towns right now, or everything in, that faces the wind needs to continually turn to face the wind. So, so yeah, so I expect that will happen because that's not a difficult one, and that does add a ton to the visuals of the, the city is having fireplaces with chimneys with smoke coming out of them. Uh, let's see, Aaron Swordmaster asks, is there any plan to make the grass in the lot for things like gardening, plant growing, etc.? Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we definitely are going to support gardening um, slash agriculture in the lots uh, and even in the houses with potted plants and flower and beds and you know, window uh, window uh, flower boxes and uh, you know all that kinds of things. Yes, Just to drown, drown the sorrow of, of the head licking. Indeed, this yes. is some house spirits rum from um, Portland, Oregon. Compliments of Adiun Tesseron. Thank you again uh, for this. I will use this as as Charlie Sheen said, alcohol is poison, and there's things inside me that I want to kill. So thank you, Jordan. Uh, back to Aaron on the gardening. That'll probably be the, uh, we've talked about doing a couple ways, either having pots that you can place to plant things in. Uh, more likely for the large garden type stuff, it'll be that they'll be raised dirt. It'll actually be a dirt object that will show up on top of whatever the grass is there. So you don't have to worry about changing out the grass or anything. There'll be a raised dirt mound area for it. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, Darthen Hodge MGT470 asks, uh, is there any plan for a guild-only housing area or map areas that a guild could claim to start their own town? Uh, we've, we've definitely gotten this request uh, quite a bit, um, and, uh, you know, it's something that uh, we're discussing. I'm not sure how we facilitate it, but uh, definitely, you know, we, we definitely understand and know how important guilds and those kinds of large social persistent structures are to games like these, and so we want to do whatever we can to help those guys, so uh, we'd love to figure out a way where we can make that happen. Not sure how. Um, no promises. Don't lawyer me. Uh, but I think, it's a, I think it's a cool idea, for sure. Um, Someone made a nice comment that I liked uh, on the chimney smoke thing. Oh, it's Iron Rain underscore, 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 I think. It's maybe just two. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, it's two underscores. I'm sure that's real important to them. Uh, but how about the chimney visuals only show while a person is in the home, so you can tell when somebody's home, which I kind of like that idea. That's kind of fun. Oh, that's awesome. And that's easy. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, but what if uh, I have my servants there, and, like, wouldn't they have a fire going? A little open, closed business vendor sign, maybe? Maybe we can have a craftable flagpole with a flag on it that the flag goes up when you're home if you want to put that wow. out there and use that as a decoration. So you're saying people, well, do we really want to give players the ability to set flags? Sorry. Oh. I, I'll drink. Okay. Uh, let's see. What else What else have we got? Um, There's uh, still some very early on that were passed over or missed because of all the questions coming in at once, okay. so if you want to scroll up. Uh, oh, sorry. Let's see. Dead air time. This is terrible. Dead air time. Oh, God. Uh, oh, Melchior Mayher asks, uh, when you build a house, will it be there instantaneously, or will it take a bit of time like it's actually being built? Um, uh, uh, that's a cool idea. Um, we actually have talked about um, some sort of uh, visual effect uh, associated with that appearing. Um, uh, it's not obviously it's not in there right now. Um, we're probably not going to have it take an actual amount of time, other than maybe running some animation of something of the dust cloud and the hammers and duck 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 kind of thing. But uh, just because um, there's going to be a lot of, t I think that would be just an unnecessary dilation of time for the users. Uh, so, uh, but I think having some visual associated with it um, is interesting. Uh, Corvash has a question uh, in, about single-player offline. 
uh, and how will all those empty lots be handled? Uh, well, we actually have the ability to, um, uh, and in fact, the way you see the game when you first come in, uh, like you saw this in, uh, it was easier to see in the earlier releases, uh, but uh, the, all, the ho all the houses that you would see when you first came into Owl's Head, uh, we predefined those houses in the lots. The lots were still available for sale, but we can predefine what houses go in those lots. So uh, we'll actually, in offline mode, we'll use that data to populate those lots so there won't be a bunch of empty lots. Um, let's see. Uh, I think we answered this, but I want to answer it again, make sure people understand uh, about the basements. It's like, can you place a basement without having a house on the lot? And the answer is yes. Uh, you select the empty lot option, and you can put your basement hatch anywhere. Um, let's see. Let's see. Duke Gregor asks, can we swap basements at will, and will they keep their belongings? Um, well, uh, much like our wish list for houses in which we, we want if you to give you the ability uh, to um, say, uh, you know, uh, decorate a house, and then either move that house or exchange it for another house, but you want to save those decorations in that configuration. We want to figure out a way to support that. We don't know how we're going to do it yet. But we would offer the same thing for basements as well. And, you, as well. and yes, just like you can uh, swap out uh, your house at will, again, the way you would swap out your uh, basement would be like each basement you have is represented by that hatch. So you would have like, here's my you know, arena style basement hatch. Here's my, uh, you know, timber and uh, stone uh, basement style. Here's my stone basement style and mine basement style. And each one of those you could swap out to swap out your uh, basement will. Uh, here's a good one from Jell. Uh, I'm in the army in real life, and when I'm off on a mission for six months and I pay my game subscription, when will my house plot disappear? Uh, we're, we're going to have mechanisms in place for people who uh, have thing, life events or things like that that want to uh, prepay somehow uh, in order to not lose their lot. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll take care of you, and thank you for your service. Um, and, uh, and, and, and anybody really who's in, in that kind of situation, we would, we would help you deal with that. Um, let's see. Uh, And also, just to clarify, since Jell said, I pay my game subscription, it's, he's really talking about his house house maintenance costs, not his game subscription. Right. Yeah, because we, do, we don't have a subscription. We're subscription-free for people in the military. We'll give them that special. So, except we're subscription-free for everybody, but okay, sure. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is this is a fun one. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Ember, for uh, this one that's been hashed uh, repeatedly in the forums. But I'll do it here. Uh, so, for pledges with a waterfront property, does that mean they have to choose between the water house or the land house, or you get to place both if you're lucky enough to find a waterfront lot? Uh, that is a uh, source of great debate. Um, uh, right now, uh, currently. Uh, it is one or the other. You can either have a water lot or a land lot, um, and you have to pick, you know, the, the structure there. Uh, we understand uh, how during uh, the way it was written uh, during the Kickstarter uh, uh, created some different impressions, and so we're still figuring out how we might be able to support something like that. But it will require uh, tech to support multiple structures on a single lot, of which we don't have, and it's fairly complex to do so. So um, right now, it's, it's, it's one or the other, uh, unfortunately. So, uh, But those water houses are pretty cool, and uh, we think that you will be more than satisfied with your water house. Plus, you can still have a basement, even if it's a water house, because there's a strip of land uh, next to the water lot uh, that's there. And it's time, so it's time for. I'm not uh, licking Dallas. What is that? Is that what they're asking now? <laughs> I'm preempting it. <laughs> you hey, have if they gave us a, bu a bunch more money, you can be bought. You've already. Yeah, seen I, I, I bought. think. Why would should... you? Why would you back out now? Uh, no, we've if proven, Dallas is willing, we've proven that you can be bought. You've got whiskey in front of you. 
Did you did you hear about the head licking? No. <laughs> Here, scoot over a little bit. So Gorn can join. Come on, Ann Gorn. Uh, so the players. Uh, so first, it started with Violation saying that uh, he wanted a licking emote, uh, and that he would upgrade if we got him a licking emote. So we told him that we would give him a licking. We would make a licking emote in the game uh, if he upgraded. Uh, so. We have yet to see if he does the upgrade or not. But uh, if he does, we'll have a leaking mode, which then devolved quickly into <laughs> if during this uh, hangout, if they gave us a certain amount of money, would Joseph lick my head? Uh, $800. $800. And I said, sure. And we blew it away. We raised over $1,500. Yeah. Oh, geez. Thank you, by the way. That's so then now it's apparently devolved again. And so the question becomes, What's your price <laughs> to have your head licked by Joseph? <laughs> Why do I? And there's a paper head towel head? right there. Can we? Can we <laughs> vote that star lick Dallas's head? Hey, yeah, I just want to say that I am so thankful today is the day I actually stayed home and to take the wife to the hospital and uh, took a little bit of paternity time here to recover at home. Never have I been more thankful. <laughs> Portlandian people coming in. Who wants to be in tomorrow's hangout? That's the question. <laughs> There may be some sort of licking limit that we have to put on these hangouts. Uh, one lick per one lick per hangout, uh, possibly. Uh, but I mean, at Dallas, you know, Dallas is you know part of his core job responsibilities is fundraising. So, I mean, I think I think he owes. I mean, if people put in money, I think I think they're you know a lick, right? And, and, no, and Joseph, I don't, I don't think he actually has stubble, so. Yeah, his, and his is fuzzy, at least. Well, yeah, it'd be a little softer for him to lick it up there, it you could, know. It could be the forehead. <laughs> if you lick it, you'll have to compare and contrast the uh, flavor of the heads of uh, Star <laughs> of Dallas. The rabble from the community is, only I am allowed to lick. Apparently, I have dug that hole, and now they're wondering next time when Richard's going to be in the office. Oh, uh, good. Did you pour any of this on your head? No, but he drank it afterwards <laughs> to, to, to sanitize the inside of his tongue. I believe with all the germs. Yeah. Well, wait, they have to give us money first. I'm just preparing. Are you going to agree to it? Are you agreeing mm -hmm. to it? Yeah. I'll What's agree the price? To it. What's the price? He's flavoring it with rum, people. What's the price? Are you that? Okay. If we get another, uh, what, eight hundred dollars by the time he finishes reading out all the prizes, Joseph will lick his head. Do you both agree to that? Do I have a choice? Yeah, you, you have, have a choice. choice. You yeah. can just say no. Well, I mean. I'm going to say yes, regardless of what Joseph See, does, whether said, yeah. Joseph participates or not. Okay. All right. The way that I I've already feel, sterilized my head. You have used very, very delicious rum to sterilize your head. I cannot let that go to waste. Okay. So let's start looking at the purchases while Dallas uh, reads the pr right. this, today's prizes and right. we'll prepare for yet another licking. And because it shows up in the account page sooner than it shows up in the transaction log, from my perspective. Please pass me your username and chat. I'll look that up. It's faster than refreshing the database. Okay. Are we ready? Yeah, let's hear the prizes. Do I have to reach slowly? Should I reach slowly? Oh, God. Do we need to dim the <laughs> lights and play some music? <laughs> it, it, it helps me. It, it helps me. Yeah, okay. some very white. You need some very white. <laughs> All right. So as some of you may know and some of you may not know, we're giving away prizes every day during these hangouts. Uh, we give away 20 prizes each day. Ten of those prizes are founder level adventure pledges. And ten of those prizes are uh, weekend access passes to release five coming up later this month. Uh, we select these names randomly from all registered users of the SOTA website. And uh, no purchase is necessary. Um, you just have to be registered on there. So if you're a Kickstarter backer and you haven't linked your Kickstarter account, please go link it. Uh, so that you'll qualify for any of these prizes. Um, if you already have one of these, uh, you'll be welcome to gift it to a, to a friend. Okay, here we go. Uh, starting with the founder adventurer pledges, uh, first winner is Lockto. And don't worry if I butcher these, uh, uh, we have the email for all of these. We'll be emailing you to let you know that you won. Um, uh, the next one is Cheryl Looney. Uh, third one is Lamont Crawford. Uh, fourth one is Erdilian. This is kind of easy so far. Yeah. Uh, the fourth one is EKU Roger Tibibut. 
Um, the next one is Phyllis um, Archibald. Uh, then we have Dark Spiral. Uh, that happens to him every once in a while. Dark star sort of spirals. Yeah. Sometimes up, sometimes down. Um, chaos. It's chaos. Uh, next up is <clears throat> Azucena Cantara. Uh, then we have Kendall Garcia. Easy one. And the last uh, founder of Venture Pledge goes to Fur. Okay. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. You're too kind. Uh, now for our weekend access pass winners, we have Jessica. What does that mean? I have no idea. <laughs> Bertha Severson, Chauncey Ney, Anis Sivigizukst, uh, Kendra Detheridge, Spoonful, I like that name, Virgilio Kachin, Clarabelle Fry, Senate, and Bridget Piedra. And that's our 10 Weekend Access Pass winners. Thank you very much. So, uh, um, I'll see you back here tomorrow uh, to read tomorrow's winners, uh, um, which will be selected randomly from registered uh, users of the SOTA website. So please uh, go register and get your friends to register so they qualify for the drawing. So do we have any? Uh, how, how, we have how, any how are we doing on that? Do we have any head licking uh, lick, requirements? Fun lick, so licking requirements. I'm looking at raising stuff here. Uh, last in the last. So that one's over. All right. So uh, add on. That doesn't count. I mean, I can certainly or, understand if the value of my head doesn't match your star. Okay. Oh no, I ch I charge the same price. They just over. You just got up to fifteen. Okay. Go. So from what I can see, and I could be wrong. We have raised two hundred and fifteen dollars for uh, the Gorn Head Lick. Now, technically, since we set oh, the price, whoa, 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 whoa. we have raised uh, four hundred and forty-five dollars for the Gorn Head Lick. So you get half a. It's half of it, you mm -hmm. know, or, or smell half. I think it's a half lick. <laughs> it's so, money from here. So, so, so he did the full. Oh lick. really? Yeah. So year I, to year. Yeah. Oh, so, my so God. I think well, I we think, we did that because there was two licks. That we're paying for. We raised oh, 1, right, right. We raised fifteen hundred. Oh, okay, so okay. And so I this did. is then technically this would be a uh, quarter. Length. And also, when I got about halfway, you started to shudder, and I kind of liked it, so I kept going. Yeah, I did shudder. <laughs> <laughs> there was oh, some boy. shuddering. <laughs> and believe it or not, we are sober. I know it's hard to believe in the way we're acting. I am not going to be later. You know, the um, <laughs> the reason why this is allowed is because we haven't raised quite enough money yet to hire a human resources specialist. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that, <laughs> would, that would help us to better understand which limitations we should yeah. not uh, go beyond right. at times like this. What is appropriate? So if any of you find this offensive in any way, just give us more money and we'll hire an HR person. <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> now I have to do a half lick, and, 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 and I'm sure this is already evaporated, so I better refresh it. Yeah, we Does need more, right more, more okay. rum on there. Yeah, just, just, just a side there. Okay. Oh my God, what is going on? Okay. All right. We are, How are we at? We How are we doing? At, let's refresh it. Do, do, do. We're still at 445. All right. Let's, can we just can we just get this over with? I think it's good enough for a half lick. <laughs> well, well half -lick. given that we you know we got. Fifteen hundred before. I think the community has earned. They those. totally deserve the oh, yeah. horror. Oh yeah, because it's almost two thousand yeah. dollars, so they get a full star and a half of Gorn. Right. Yeah. Now think you about know? that. Yeah. That's two thousand dollars they could have had towards that Lord of the Manor pledge to get the lick of the game that you are blowing on me licking people. I would. I would have done the same thing. I, I don't know that you. I would have used blow and lick in the same sentence there, but. Oh yeah. God, dear HR. Right. Okay, here, you guys take front center. Oh, Let's see if I can make an even more creepy face. Oh. Can I take a shot first? Yes, oh. please take Get ready for screen capture. Put a little of that in here, if you please, sir. That ought to do it. Let me just get my shutter over with now. <laughs> Start mouth breathing. Okay, I'm ready. Wait a minute, glasses off. Okay, here we go. Oh, oh God. This is like Russian roulette. Yeah. Oh, 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 God. It was as bad as you imagined, wasn't it? Oh, God. Okay. All right. Uh, With that, on that note, uh, on that horrible, horrible, horrible note, uh, thank you, everyone, for a uh, horrifying 
hangout that was started innocently enough with housing. Uh, and remember, as always, these are discussions. Uh, these are not meant to be uh, final, this is how it's going to be. It's meant to be a discussion between us developers and you, our players. And thank you, thank you, thank you for being the best community ever. And together, we're going to make the best crowdsourced and crowd-funded RPG of all time and space. And tomorrow, somebody else is going to read this list for you, so I don't have to come back in here. There's a limit to one lick per employee. <laughs> yeah, 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 one lick per. So I've already done my service. I, yeah, I've done mine. Yeah. You want to read me lick? Um, they have to take me to dinner first. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm a, I'm a my lick friend. veteran. Okay. All right. On that note, Fire Lotus and Chris, would you like to say farewell? Sure. Just for the record, I just posted a high-res screen grab. I think it's high-res, then people at home are going to be able to get off of Utah or uh, YouTube for the uh, Dallas lick there. So uh, I just posted it to the chat channel, so hopefully everybody will be happy about that. Yeah. And I think they got uh, more like 550, according to my records. But Well, let me, let me refresh the database one last time, see if anything new popped in. I'm still seeing that, but I could be counting wrong. Okay. All right. Uh, community... Goodbye. Great talking to you again. Look forward to talking to you tomorrow. Uh, what is our topic tomorrow? Uh, single player offline, I believe, is the topic tomorrow. Good so, stuff. I think so, yeah. All right. Look forward to talking to you tomorrow, and uh, I should be in the office, and uh, so hopefully they will be a little more in control tomorrow, and there will not be rum involved or licking. Hey, the rum only came out after the licking. <laughs> yeah. All right. See you guys tomorrow. Passing it over to Fire Lotus. And I get to, I guess, close this fantastic experience. Uh, a little glad I'm broadcasting remote from Alaska. That puts plenty of distance between the looking. Um, and I know those of you who are suggesting I take the HR position, probably not a good idea. I'm, as you can see, as bad as everybody else. So uh, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. We'll talk about single player offline. Uh, until then, thanks for your support and look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.